My name is Modern Sinkala. Well, last week we started a discussion on the late great Godfrey Chitalu, who, according to records, scored 107 goals in one season alone and 116 goals in the whole calendar year of 1972. Today we'll continue speaking to different stakeholders on this matter. We'll also look at the Olympic Day, which fell on Tuesday, 23rd June, 2020. And in the studio, I'm joined by National Olympic Committee of Zambia Programs Officer, Tiniko Nombo. Welcome to the program. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay. Yeah. Um, first things first, um, we want to understand what is the Olympic Day and when is it held? Okay. So the Olympic Day is um, a celebration that we hold every 23rd of June in commemoration of the modern Olympics that started in 1894. And during this day, we encourage participation from persons of all walks of life to uh, be part of, uh, usually we have the Olympic run or the Olympic walk and different activities such as tree planting and um, to create awareness about the Olympic values in different, uh, uh, different communities within and outside Lusaka. All right. Yeah. So now with the coronavirus outbreak, how was the 2020 uh, Olympic Day celebrated or commemorated? Yeah, so 2020 has been has given us a different view on how we can still disseminate the Olympism spirit. And we've had, um, we first had pre premiered the, a message from the president of the National Olympic Committee of Zambia, Mr. Alfred Foloko, encourage everyone to participate in this Olympic Day. And we also had a virtual walk and run uh, between, which is between 5 and 10 kilometers, and we've had over 170 participants. Also, we had um, different uh, persons and athletes, and also people that have had an experience within the Olympics to speak about the Olympic values, Olympic Day, and the experience they've had throughout um, uh, their walk into the Olympic movement. Okay. So, that's so how we uh, this was this happening throughout the world? This is actually commemorated throughout the world, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the notable um, athletes that took part in the virtual um, Olympics? Uh, we've had um, our, our former Olympian, Mr. Samuel Matej, and an eye-opener in that people have been creative in how they can actually commemorate. We haven't been able to meet in masses, but people are still upholding our values of friendship and uh, still being active and also fostering the spirit of uh, positiveness during this COVID um, pandemic. Yeah. Okay, I know Zambia has been a regular at the Olympic Games. Yeah. Um, what else has been lined, lined up for the rest of the year as, uh, for National Olympic Committee of Zambia? Well, for the National Olympic Committee of Zambia, as, as uh, the athletes are still preparing and still being active as they uh, wait for the 2020 Olympic Games, Tokyo uh, 2020 Games, uh, we still have, um, as things get better, we still have activities such as... Um, uh, more uh, activities that will encourage participation of both athletes and uh, the team that supports the athletes in ensuring that they prepare for the Tokyo Games. All right. Thank you very much for coming through. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. So I was hosting uh, the National Olympic Committee of Zambia uh, Programs Officer <coughs> Tiniko Nombo, who was shedding more light on the Olympic Day that the rest of the world uh, held on uh, Tuesday, uh, which was 23rd June. All right, uh, moving on, um, uh, time now to continue discussing the legacy left by the late Zambian striker Godfrey Yuka Chitalu. The country has been calling for the recognition of the goal scoring machine and the prolific striker, the late Godfrey Chitalu. Um, the late Godfrey Chitalu's record as the world's highest goal scorer in one calendar year. The World Soccer Governing Body, FIFA, washed its hands by stating that it does not keep domestic records, but only international competitions under its wings. FIFA spokesperson Alex Stone told BBC Sport in 2012 that the highest goal-scoring record for Chitalu in one calendar year was not a FIFA record, but a record by the media. So before we start our discussion, let's look at his profile. 
left side Chitaru. At a very bad angle, surrounded on the left wing. Godfrey breaks even again. Referee says play on to Godfrey Chitaru. You have to score! It's a goal! Born on 22nd October 1947, the late Godfrey Chitaru, nicknamed Yuka, is without doubt the deadliest striker that Zambia has ever produced. He was a footballer known for making and breaking records through his goal-scoring instincts at both national team and club levels. Shitalu started his football career at primary school in Mikomfa Township of Rwansha District, Copper Belt Province, before playing for youth teams such as Kisansa Youth Club and Kwacha One Community Team in Kitwe. In 1964, at the age of 17, he joined an elite club, Kitwe United, and played in the reserve team but quickly stamped his prowess and started playing for the main team. In 1968, Chitalu broke the world record, becoming the highest scorer in one calendar year after scoring 81 goals for both club and country. Chitalu left Kito United in 1971 and joined another elite side, Kabu Warriors of Central Province. His efficiency at goal continued and a year later in 1972, he broke his own 81-goal record and scored a total of 116 goals in one calendar year for both club and country. Nine of the goals were scored in the Confederation of African Football Calf Club Championship in January before the Zambian football season kicked off, while 107 goals were scored within a season. Sponsors Rothman's International gave Chitalu a special ball with his name, year and number of goals inscribed on it to recognize his monumental achievement. This is an achievement that the rest of the world is yet to recognize. On 25th May 1981, the then Republican President Kenneth Kaunda bestowed Chital with the insignia of honor for his contribution to Zambian football. In 1982, he retired as a footballer and concentrated on coaching. In summary, Chital won 12 trophies for both club and country as a player, five trophies as a coach, six Zambian League top scorer awards, and five Zambian Football of the Year awards. Chitalu, who became the head coach of the Zambia national football team, unfortunately died on 28 April 1993 in a terrible plane crash that killed the entire national team in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Gabon while traveling to Senegal for a World Cup qualifier match. Godfrey Yuka Chitalu might be gone, but his world record of 116 goals in one calendar year of 1972 and a Zambian record of 79 goals for the national team may not even be broken in a lifetime. Modern Sinkala ZNBC Sport, Lusaka. Okay, so, in case you are wondering who Godfrey Chitalu is, that's the man there in that report. So, in the studio right now, I'm joined by FAS Communications <coughs> Manager, Sidney Mungala, on my immediate left. Uh, followed by the football analyst, Muyunda Nyambe and Tandika Chirua. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very so much. Good afternoon Thank to you. you. Good afternoon to the viewers. Okay. So last week, um, Sydney, we talked to uh, the Kabwe Warriors chairperson, uh, Hayden Dingo, who indicated that Kabwe Warriors intend to honor Godfrey Chitalo for his feet. Um, anything from FAS that can be expected regarding this matter? Well, I think uh, <coughs> what I can say is that this is a matter that has been uh, on the archives, or rather on the first days for a while. I think you remember that in uh, 2012 there was a petition from uh, a group of, uh, uh, I think, soccer fans and analysts that uh, went to FAS and presented uh, a document. That was a verification of uh, all the goals that uh, Chitalo scored, and they entrusted FAS to transmit that uh, document to FIFA, which was done. And I think the challenge still remains that... Uh, we are still being uh, pushed to provide evidence that uh, this uh, is exactly what happened because I think uh, even when there are incidences where uh, his record has been acknowledged, I think I saw running through that clip mm -hmm. where the head of state himself did uh, honor him. I think uh, there was also a moment uh, when FIFA itself did uh, honor Chitaro. I think people like mm -hmm. Tandika will be able to tell you that in 82, yeah. he was honored for those goals that uh, he scored. So uh, even when there are have been uh, disputes around um, what happened or the number of goals that was scored. I think there's a general acknowledgement that uh, uh, this is just an issue that uh, probably there's just a refusal to put it on record that yes, it is true, this is the <coughs> record holder of the world, uh, uh, the uh, highest number of goals uh, scored in a calendar season. I think uh, 
that is what has been uh, being pursued. Even now, I think uh, the first president, Mr. Andrew Kamanga, and, uh, has been uh, liaising with uh, his colleagues at CAF. I think there is a possibility that uh, something should be coming up uh, in the next uh, few weeks or months. Uh, that issue has been resurrected again. And uh, we heard about someone who has been doing the, that work, uh, Satish Seka, uh, the writer. I think he has also presented his own case. So this uh, is coming from all sorts of uh, angles trying to pursue this case. So we are hopeful that uh, in uh, due course, uh, he should be able to be acknowledged, although it will be posthumous. But uh, I think uh, we will not uh, rest until that uh, record is acknowledged. Okay. Um, Muyund, um, when did you come to know of Godfrey Yukachitalu and you, uh, what did you hear about him? Well, I, I think, uh, look, history is history. And uh, for me, the time that, uh, uh, you know, the Gabon air disaster, uh, you know, happened, I think we, I was young by then, but uh, I was still going to school. And it was a moment where, you know, the nation was hit and uh, you could really tell that uh, there were those moments where, uh, you know, there was each and every, you know, household that was in one way or the other affected by the fact that, uh, you know, the crash had happened and we lost, uh, you know, our, our great heroes in that uh, tragedy. And talking about Godfrey Yukachitalu, I think the history books speak volumes. It goes without saying. And like I said even last time to say, where have we been? You know, it's, it, it shouldn't have taken a group of people to come and, you know, try to remind us of the good old days and an achievement that really would never be, uh, you know, surpassed in generations to come for me. I think looking at the fact that uh, it's very difficult to score such number of, uh, uh, you know, goals. And like, uh, uh, you know, Sydney was saying, it's good that now they've resurrected, you know, their petition to make sure that <coughs> going forward we should be able to, uh, you know, pursue this case to the latter. And as far as we are concerned, whether it is considered or not, the bottom line is this person scored those goals and this person deserves to be honored posthumously and it deserves to be recognized, you know, going forward. So for me, I think we have to wait and see how it unfolds and we're not going to rest. We'll give them all the documentation that FIFA wants. If there is something that is fishy which they are trying to hide, we're going to unearth it because it's about, you know, documentation. It's about providing facts and those facts which the Football Association of you know, Zambia have. And at the end of the day, for us, we have a case that we need to cement. It's not something that was being written in class, but it's something that happened on the pitch. So really, there's overwhelming evidence that should show that uh, this person scored more than 107 goals in a calendar season. So if they want to talk about 107, we'll tell them there's even more to that. Exactly, because uh, in total, 116 yeah. goals. Definitely, the, yes. The so nine <coughs> goals were scored in the club championships. Mm. But because the Zambian season was starting somewhere around March, so yes. those, the nine goals were not considered for the season. But exactly. overall, 116 goals. Mm. Tandika, um, I'll ask you the same question. Um, when did you come to hear of uh, uh, Godfrey Chital? Well, I think the name in late 80s. I think it was active uh, when I was in Ikawa at some point visiting my aunt, going for holidays, and uh, that, that's a name, you know, in the entire town and uh, even the railway grounds, as it is now named 107, uh, which for me should be named 116, uh, because that's what is scored, and uh, even those goals were during that calendar period. Now, people may argue, say, no, apart from those goals, what else did Yuka did? Yuka has been uh, a footballer of the five times in the Zambian League. You know, you look at his legacy, he's not somebody to play with. If you look at even the scoring prowess, you know, he scored so many goals in other seasons, uh, such that he, when you come to the international level, by the way, he has scored 79 goals. He has beaten the mighty Pele, the best and greatest ever player on planet Earth, who was about no, 77 that's, in the that's, international that's your, that's your calendar. And I'll qualify why I'm saying yeah, he's the he's greatest not, he's player. One of the greatest. No, no, no. I'll qualify. He's Don't worry. The, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. the reason why I'm saying that because the Pele is the only player on earth who has won three World Cups. We, the second is just one World Cup who yeah. follows him. Doesn't Pele is the player who has scored a hat trick at the age of 17. No other player has done that. He's been the greatest. second top scorer. He's the one who has carried Brazil. Without him, they've failed. A good example, 1958, they won World Cup. When he missed 1966, Brazil were knocked. I mean, Brazil were knocked out by Portugal then, and they didn't. He's when he came he back in 1970, Brazil. He's no, no, no. Let me finish my point. You mm -hmm. have your own share. Brazil won it, so he's been successful. He scored 1,000 plus goals. Now, 
when you look at Yuka Godfrey Chita, was beaten at an international level. That record is acknowledged. Mm. When it comes to the calendar, and it's not. At mm. first, you are pushing, you no, know, Gedi Muller scored this, then Leonel Messi. No, the issue is here, we Africans, because if in 1982, uh, Godfrey Yuka Chita was honored in France for his contribution in African football, what's so difficult about FIFA to acknowledge the facts and well, say this is a reality? They don't uh, keep domestic records. Or no, but at one point they commented about this uh, Gedi Mola Messi record until they saw, oh, there's another one who is an African, but they tried to silence it. But I think we shouldn't end there. In my view, we should do consistently uh, make sure that this thing is documented and uh, we have books to this to attest. FIFA, in my view, they just have to. They have no option to acknowledge that those who have done this, ABC and D, uh, as it is, honor them. So uh, this is a Yuka Godfrey style. In fact, those who watched him live, like one Reverend Alfred Nirendo told me, that he would play even more than and better than Messi on the pitch. And that's how deadly he was. So you would see a quality in him and the contribution is done. Even the coaching, when he came to coach, you look at the national team he coached and he, he mentored. I mean, they were physically fit, all those issues, instilled discipline, although he also had the problem with discipline. But Yes. That's one of the problems of these big, big stars, okay? They also have certain dark areas. Yeah. So I think that, he, in my view, it's, big, it's because an African he is. But now we have interest from the UK, others raising the matter. Mm -hmm. So definitely, maybe, if you have somebody with the, uh, with the compelling voice, perhaps, okay. maybe the So now, Tandika, let's mm. speak to someone who <laughs> played with uh, Godfrey Kachalo at, both, at national team. Um, by then in the 70s and maybe 80s. And then at club level, um, he was playing for Mufrida Wanderers. Godfrey Yukachital was playing for Kabwe Warriors. I'm talking about Akim Musenge, born in 1949. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, so we want to hear from you. How can you describe Godfrey Yukachital? What kind of player was he? Well, Godfrey uh, was one of uh, the best uh, players uh, Zambia has produced as a striker. He played a very good game, both at club and national level. Okay. How, how, how was it, you know, marking him? You are you are a defender. He was a striker. Um, marking him when you are playing from Villa Wanderers, how was it? Uh, Godfrey was a, a very elusive striker. He was fast and, he, you know, could score goals from any angle of the goal. And during his hair days, before I started even playing for him, uh, for, for the, against him, sorry, he, he was playing against very uh, tough defenders like uh, Sebastian Ngungu from Blackpool, Patrick Amato from Undola United, Howard Mukta from Kabwe, Joseph Kanono from Mufrida, and Patrick Nkone, just to mention a few. So those were really strong defenders, but he used to score goals against these defenders. And he, apart from the defense, the, the goalkeepers who were then there playing for these defenders, we had uh, Philip Sabu from Undola, uh, Tromeo Mansa from Mufrida, we had Ben Sevele from Nkana, uh, Afi Malama from Roni. All those I'm men mentioning are very, very good players. But he used to sneak through and score goals against those uh, tenders. Okay. What, how would you, um, let me say, what do you think about the 107 goals that he scored in one season alone? Okay. Uh, those, those goals were scored by Godfrey. Of course, people can dispute because they were not there. But we who were there saw what was happening. And most of the goals which he scored during that time were from the, 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 the cup games. You know, during that time we used to have a lot of cup games like the Castle Cup, the Chibuku Cup, Challenge Cup, and the league games. So during these games, those teams which were below the Division One level were also included in the cup games. And those uh, teams he had a little bit weaker defenders. So he could score up to eight goals sometimes in a single game. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it, it just right that he scored those goals. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Some would say, no, maybe the league that time was not very competitive. Is it true? No, it was. As you can hear, the players that I'm mentioning here, most of them were playing for the national team, and the, they were coming from different clubs. It, it was quite competitive. And the, by then, we had uh, a lot of uh, players who were older. You know, they, they, they played the games at older stage. Okay. Now, how would you want legends like you and Godfrey Ukachtalu to be honored? Well, definitely uh, honoring somebody is up to the people who saw us play and saw how much we put into this game of football in Zambia. Most of them have even left us. If you look at the team that went to Egypt sometime in 1974, there are only about... 13 of them are gone, and about 9 who are left now. So if people are to honor a person like me or somebody who played football before, it should be done when he's still alive, not when he passes on. That's when people say, no, he was a good boy, he did this and that. So it's, it's up to the nation to look at this, and especially the football team of Zambia. Okay, thank you very much. Now, before we let you go, one of my panelists yes, here yes. Wants, um, has a question for you. Yes, yes, uh, yes uh, Mr. Akim uh, Nyambe here. Uh, I wanted to just find out from your own analysis, uh, you had players like Godfrey and, the, and yourself and the other players that you've talked about. What was the most uh, you know, challenging part for you as, as a unit, as a team, to have failed to even win at least, uh, you know, continental trophy to do with, uh, for example, the, the Cup of Nations, the Africa Cup of Nations. Did we have opponents that were harder in terms of other countries? Or Because from the players that you're talking about, were we not able to have won even one or two Cup of Nations at that time? Where was the challenge at that particular time? Because there was so much competition. Okay, uh, that question, you know, when we were playing during those days, we had a good team. And the... The only one thing which I can point out here is the teams that were qualifying to get to the finals were very minimal as opposed to nowadays. See, there were about three, if I talk about the World Cup, during those days, only three were coming from Africa. And, the, you know, teams that qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations were also minimal. And the, we could win. We used to win a lot of teams from the southern part of the country. And we even... Uh, got to the finals for the first time in 1974. So we were not a bad side. It's only that it wasn't our time for us to win the game, mm -hmm. uh, the cup, sorry. So uh, I think it's not that we were weak. We were quite a good side. And if you look at the players that I've mentioned, they are, they are all nation team material. Okay, Coach Musenge, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much. All right, that's uh, Coach Akim Sengi. He played for the KK11, mm. um, which was the Zambia national football team, and also for Mufulira Wanderers. But before Mufulira Wanderers, he played for Butondo Western Tigers in uh, Mufulira. Okay, so we move on. Uh, let me get your reactions, uh, Sydney. He says you should be honoring people while they're still alive, as far as. Well, I think uh, various people from the football uh, fraternity have been honored uh, from a long time ago. I think uh, we play our small part in making recommendations. I think uh, if you follow what has been happening over the years, whenever there are even uh, uh, national events, uh, maybe Africa Freedom Day or Independence, I think you notice that there are people from the football fraternity that have been honored. Uh, but most importantly, there have been efforts in the recent past to try and hunt for some of these uh, uh, heroes yes. to bring them to the table. Yes. Uh, we met a few, I think there was a consultative forum at uh, Hilton Hotel in town. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I, 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 I met some of them, I think uh, the, the 74 class, I think uh, some of them were there and uh, they were given a platform to just uh, try and share what they were doing and those that are within areas where you can utilize them. I think we have a technical committee at first. Uh, if you go in there, you find that uh, some of the people in that committee, I think Mr. Fred Miller still sits on that committee. We have uh, Ken Obright Obanda, who is a former national team coach. Uh, so in a small way, uh, some of those people are being given uh, uh, responsibilities. But it's not really a question of uh, 
uh, direct uh, aid. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't need to give money to empower someone. Mm -hmm. I think you can present opportunities. Uh, I've seen a few being invited to the annual general meeting just to uh, help them interact with uh, the current administrators. And uh, for us, we are also trying to learn from them because uh, some of the challenges that we go through are not new. I think uh, football has gone through them. So that is where their experience comes, uh, comes from. So uh, we may not exactly be living up to their expectation, but I think in a very small way, we are trying to bring them to the table and listen to them and see where we can pick them up. Okay. How about making them life members? What does it take? There's a very good number of them who are life mm. members, actually. Uh, if you, you see people in green jackets uh, when the AGM uh, resumes, I think there is supposed to be a few of them again joining that elite club. Uh, so uh, from that uh, perspective, I think we haven't done uh, very badly in terms of uh, hunting down where these people are and uh, trying to make them uh, felt at least uh, their experiences are getting to be recognized uh, by the current day administrators. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the difference here is... Um, you know, when I heard him speak, you know, Akim, uh, Mr. Akim, uh, uh, you could really, you know, there were certain names that were just coming out of his mouth, like, you know, they used to eat football, you know, they used, they had so much of a passion than making it a business, and you could really hear the names that he was just, you know, talking about, and some of those, you know, were household names, and going forward, like he's saying, I think also we need to continue to throw, you know, uh, the weight on fuzz uh, on, 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 on such recognitions because at that time, I think they, there are a lot of stories that need to be shared. There are a lot of experiences that need to be learned uh, from the crop of today as compared to, you know, that crop. Because if we were to take time to even ask him in terms of the team that even won the AFCON, if he was to choose, you know, the best 11 from the time that he was playing football up to date, Maybe I would be I, I would be surprised if there was one or two names that you would mention from the team that won the Afcon because of the quality that you know was there at that time with the quality that uh, you know uh, won the, the the cup of this. Not that those players were not good, but you could really see the competition that was there. Even just to sit on the bench, I think it was a huge you know bonus and uh, uh, it took a lot of hard work. So I think Faz, even as they are doing their you know licenses, the, 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 the coaching licenses and everything, I think we have some of these people that can bring you know, us on board, that can be brought on board to be able to just provide you know, technical support here and there, and at the end of the day, we can get <coughs> motivated. And in the spirit of togetherness, this is what we want to see going forward in terms of our football you know, in the land. Okay, Tandika, you were itching to yeah, come. Yeah, basically I wanted to say that I think in those days you'd have people like Simuto, who is a midfielder. Yes, and would score Kiste plus goals eh, in a season, <laughs> mm -hmm. which you don't see in a striker. So it tells you also the breed <laughs> they had and the generation. Yeah, but I think when you look at Talu again, when you look at it, when he played at that time, defenders were rough. <coughs> they would even elbow you, there's no red card. It's now the rules now. You sign the player who's playing like Messi, is touched, is foul. So stars are really protected today. In those yesteryears, there was nothing like that. You know, and they, they would go tackling what would call amasembe proper. Yes, <laughs> to break your leg, but there's no red card, you know. So those are very difficult. The game was very physical, but he managed to, to score and outsmart the defenders. So it tells you, this man was a genius. And how do you explain, you know, the quality of defense, tackling, not today where they would escort you, you'd even have wing backs. No, in those days, traditional defenders would defend doubtly, you know, right. and that's the era. Okay, he made the mark. Let's now get to commentaries of some games that uh, Godfrey Stalu played in and scored. Commentaries, cutters of the late great football commentator, Dennis Diwewe. As Warriors supporters chant the war song in a 0 0 situation, Clement Banda to cut for Jutalo in possession of the ball on the left wing. to goalkeeper Bonfest Banda. Banda gets rid of the ball again for Cabo Warriors now. It comes square this side of the field. Godfrey Chitaru at a very bad angle, surrounded on the left wing. Godfrey breaks even again. Referee says play on to Godfrey Chitaru. Still in possession of the ball. He has got a very bad angle to negotiate, beating two men. In the process, he crosses the ball. He has to score. It's a goal! It's Warriors in the lead, as Joseph Chalo picks up the ball here on behalf of Cabo Warriors. He pushes it forward here, and they run for the ball, stopped once again to Godfrey Chitalo. 
And it is good for Chitaro in possession of the ball. He takes on an arm. You guys going up there. Good friend. Beautiful pass. Comes back to Noah Zulu. Good friend Chitaro takes over. He has to move. Beautiful pass by Chitaro. Warriors, you have to attack to Clement Banda. They are attacking with Chalo. Chalo, no matter a fullback, they have put him in midfield. Again to Chitalu. Is at the back. Takes over the ball. Transfers the weight of attack. You have to do it, Warriors, now. Here's the goal! One nothing Zambia in the lead. And they send it back. Back was again to Peter Nyama. And then Akim Musenge, captain of the Zambia national side, gets it away. Back to Chola. And then Martin Besa. Besa to Chitalu. Chitalu tries to go. You guys going up there. Chitalu has the ball. Went to Solo. Third minute, Chitalu makes it 2-0. He flew Solo. And it comes. All the way to Chitaru again, comes all the way again to Basso. Basso all the way to Chola. Chola again to Chanda. Chanda to Chitaru again to Besa. Besa again to Bernard Chanda. Chanda up in possession of the ball again to Chitaru. Chitaru has got the ball. Chitaru! Headed away by Wiri Piri, comes back. Back was again to Chitaru. Bernard Chanda is alone, Chitaru breaks through. Now Chitaru goes. We have to score by each other. It's a goal! Those were the days. <laughs> Those were the days. Those who've been following football from way back would attest to this. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, li I, I like one part where, you know, he was so passionate, uh, you know, uh, the late Dennis Lua, where he even, you know, says my chair, because, it's, you know, it's just one of those things where you just want to make sure that, you know, he, he, he just has to score. And then the ball just has to be at the back of the net. And at the end of the day, I think those were the good, you know, the good old days. Uh, how I wish we were there, some of us. But anyway, we just have to go <laughs> through the history books and uh, try to yeah, read that, through and have those research. experiences. Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, anyway. yeah, I, I think in those days also you like the passion Dennis had, yeah, and you do say it's a go, but then you listen to the radio, radio when well, the ball hasn't even crossed the line, <laughs> but ultimately it will. Radio you know, is always faster yes. than TV. Uh -huh. exactly, and you'd yes. be emotionally engaged even if you are listening and following the proceedings. That's how Dennis Lewe was. And arguably the best commentator. I hope Nyambe will not argue this. No, one. no, no, no. Yeah. I'm, so I'm for me, because one. it's I'm with you. but yes. he did his <laughs> very good work, and you could see it's like he knew also the movements of these players and yet this instinct if it comes from Alex Chola it goes there and the next is this you know he had uh, mastered the art of it and Dennis would also put the humor Moiche, you know Ichimboya yes. as they say traditional cousinship you know whilst he was commenting so I think he, these, these were the great moments and we hope that we, they can be properly documented and maybe fans may find a place where they can put these history things something like a miniature and uh, keep all these records, you know, and uh, document uh, for, the, for others to follow in the future. So we hope that uh, these things will not be washed away. I think we have won our history to, sh to, to, to show, and this is what we are bringing to the nation, I mean. And the other yeah. thing is, can they also bring about charity matches whenever certain players, you know, are retiring? The likes of Christopher Katongo, Renford Kalaba, you know, Isaac Chancer. These are players that brought us that glory that you know needs to go down in the history books and these are players that need to be you know recognized to the fullest because even when they are walking on the streets i want to take a selfie with them i want to you know be able to be a part and parcel of that history so going forward i i think we need some of these you know recognition matches just to play for them and just say thank you then we bring the old fellas around some of those players they played against at both club level and uh, you know even at national team level i think doesn't break any bonds if at all we went that direction so that we should continue to start to recognize then what we are doing now for god for you catch that when he is going, I think that's one of those concerns that you know came through to say, in as much as we are trying to recognize, let us also try to learn from some of these things so that while these players are alive, we need to give them the recognition they deserve. Okay, but I want to find out from Sydney, as far as do you keep records of what happens with uh, players, clubs, and so forth? 
Well, I think uh, if we go back uh, in terms of what is uh, the uh, what is lacking, we don't really have a place where you walk to and find uh, some of these uh, records. I think uh, where you need to verify something, uh, we've had to fall back on the National Archives. And I think this idea has been sold, although it has not yet been implemented, of uh, putting up uh, a, a, memo a room for memorabilia. I think you heard uh, the president talking about uh, having a mini museum for, for football. I think that is where some of these things are supposed to come through. But the record keeping, if you go back uh, from successive uh, uh, administrations, I think uh, there is nowhere to pick up. And if you are looking for something that is uh, purely football, if you are looking for this kind of record, there hasn't been a way of uh, consistently picking up. So if you walked in too fast, you are looking for maybe a game that was played uh, a few years back. Uh, you won't find it uh, in one place. Maybe someone here may have used their initiative and they have it in one place. And I think that is what has been uh, a challenge. And I hope that uh, the measures that are, that are being put in place will help us to ensure that we have a permanent record for some of these things. OK. Let's now join Jeremy Chimba. He's an author. He wrote a book, Got For You, Catch Talu, the score of 107 goals in one season. We also want to hear his views about uh, Godfrey Yukach Talu. Um, Jerry, welcome to the program. Uh, thanks, Modern. Um, I'd like to say good afternoon to all the, the panelists there. All right. So, so um, the first question I'd want to ask you is, after you wrote this book, uh, what has been the feedback out there regarding uh, this uh, setting straight this record of Godfrey Yukach Talu? Uh, the publication of the book uh, was met with a very positive response. People were very receptive. They were happy that there was um, at least a, a biography of a footballer, uh, something that uh, we didn't have before. And uh, uh, it uh, presented an opportunity for people, not just in Zambia, but uh, world over, to get to know the experts of uh, Godfrey Yukachitalu. OK, but how does it make you feel that despite um, your publication, some quarters of the world still doubt this record by Godfrey Uh Well, it's, uh, it's very unfortunate uh, because, uh, if you recall, I think uh, FIFA were ready to honor Messi for scoring um, the record number of goals, surpassing uh, Gerd Muller's uh, record in uh, 2012. And uh, when uh, Zambians brought uh, this up, they said, look, uh, we've got our own player who scored more goals in uh, a single year. They said, uh, well, if um, you'd have to present evidence of that. And once the evidence was uh, put on the table, they did a U-turn. They said, uh, well, we don't keep track of uh, domestic uh, records. We only look at uh, international matches. But uh, Zambians have known about this record from time immemorial. Um, and uh, the publication actually presents proof because it lists uh, all the goals that he scored in that year. Uh, there's even the photo which I showed earlier of uh, Chitalu being honored and being given a, a football with the number of goals that he scored in that uh, season in 1972. So the proof is there, the records are there, and uh, uh, those who want can follow it up. Okay, what do you think we should do as a country to make sure that the record is set straight so that when you go to Google, you just type the mm. highest scorer in one calendar year, it, it will show mm. Godfrey Stahl. When you go to Wikipedia, mm. all those details will be there. What do you think we should do? Uh, we need to make sure that it's uh, recognized uh, because, like you said earlier, some people have been sort of uh, disparaging uh, the, the league he played in, saying that it wasn't very competitive. But uh, if it wasn't so competitive, how come he managed to score so many goals in uh, international matches for Zambia? Mm. He scored 79 goals. So this was a really special player, and it was a monumental achievement, which uh, should actually be recognized, and he should get the honor that uh, he deserves. Uh, it shouldn't just be a record uh, that we talk about, but it should be recognized the world over. OK. Uh, finally, Jerry, how do you think um, Chitalu should be honored? Uh, first, the authorities, football authorities, CAF, FIFA, should give him the recognition that he deserves. When they are talking about uh, records, Chitalo's name should be there because he did score those goals. 
the proof is there. And uh, he didn't just score these goals in uh, league or cup competitions, but he also scored a number of goals for the national team. He holds the Sekafa scoring record, 11 goals in one tournament. He's uh, scored uh, 79 goals. Uh, that's uh, an African record as well. So all these should be recognized, and then the man should be honored, should get the, the credit that he deserves. And uh, posthumously, he should be honored for, for, for his monumental achievement. Okay, Jerry Mchimba, thank you very much for coming through. Uh, thanks, Modern. Uh, looking forward to the conclusion of this uh, campaign. <laughs> okay, thanks. Looking forward as well. You. So, uh, gentlemen, mm -hmm. that was Jerem Chimba, yeah. an author. He's written a book about Code for mm -hmm. Yuka um, yeah. Anyone can pick it up. Anyone yeah, maybe to mm -hmm. say that uh, he's also an eighth, the Sekafa <laughs> record, the East and the Central, uh, where he scored 11 and his all time scholar. <coughs> uh, I think even when you look at Africa, he's the all time top scholar in African football, uh, international matches. Now, you see, even if the people may argue about the league, how come when we look at the goals he scored in international competitions, for example, Ronaldo is second, he's got 99. The first man is an Iranian. Why don't you also they discount to say the league there and the kind of football? If at all here we are even far better. You know, but there it is, somebody from Iran tops the chart on international uh, level and then he follows of course Christian Ronaldo, then Yuka Godfrey Tal and others. Okay. So I think this issue of uh, trying to push this, when you see this comes up, you're trying to change, go post. I think for me, I think that that's one of the things we should always condemn. We must always adhere, like the way FIFA advocates for fair play. Fair play should not just be on the pitch, but even the way they administer these records and compile. Facts are facts. And delete them the way they are. You don't have to tamper or to discredit. You know, after all, these are members of FIFA, members of CAF, and... Uh, yeah, so you take as it is. It happened, and that's a fact, and that's the truth. There's nothing to do or to backpedal. No, and I think this is one of the issues African voices should voice out. You know, despite seeing good African players coming on the scene, the DJ Drogba, somewhat, but all these, they can't still match. So it tells you that he was one of a kind in his time. Okay. Right, uh, now gentlemen, um, one of Zambia's celebrated football commentators, the late Dennis Liwewe, had his own way of describing Chitalu. Let's listen to this. No player has had such an impact on Zambian football as Godfrey Chitalu. Even today, there is no better striker loose in the country and perhaps in Africa as Godfrey Chitalu. His bold attitude and ability has never been questioned. Chitalu is a thoroughbred of international repute and the most accomplished striker Zambia has ever produced. No one, perhaps apart from Samuel Zuman Jovu of Mufrira Wanderers, has become a household name in Zambian football as Godfrey Chitalu. Fire, he believes football is a thrilling game and the fans love to see spectacular goals. He always sets himself out to take on those fearsome tightly packed defenders, always spreading panic in opposing defenses, single-handed, and succeeds. Naturally, he's the most marked player in the country. There is no doubting the fact that football is his game. He says, when I'm on the field of play, I forget everything except goals, goals, goals. All I want are goals for my club or for Zambia. Chitaru is extremely lethal. He moves with the stealth of a panther and the speed of a cheetah. His right leg is as dynamic as if charged with dynamite. He is a sort of a match winner whose value is priceless. For not only does he score lots of goals, but most of all, he scores important ones. Some players turn up with hat tricks when their team wins by, say, six goals or so. Chitalu is the type of player who just turns in one goal but makes sure that that is the winning goal. And in addition, he has scored scores and scores of goals for his club in Zambia. He is an assiduous worker who likes to go deep, find the ball himself and strike from difficult positions. This is what makes him so valuable. So many strikers do let the hard tackling rattle them and their effectiveness decreases. Consistency is Chitalu's strong point. He's gifted with versatility and vitality. 
He has pace, skill and courage. And these are some of the qualities you look for in a top player. Wow, just the choice of words is, is amazing. Uh, gentlemen, you can pick it up. Yeah, I, I, I think when, look, uh, one thing that we also need to, to acknowledge is the fact that we have a player that was gifted, he was talented, and he really, really made use of that talent that was given. And you could really see that there was so much of a passion that he had going forward. And uh, when you hear the late Dennis Lowe talk about him, like, you know, he's, he's just somebody that you would just adore even to just go and watch in training. When he's on the pitch, he would just do his job. He was always a match winner, 99%. You know, whenever he played for club and country, you could always rely on him. And I want to believe that he had more of the you know, the ball than any other, t you know, player on the, on the pitch because of the fact that you always considered him as a match winner. And uh, when you compare him also to, you know, the late uh, Samuel Zoomed Love, I think it was always, you know, that uh, battle in terms of, okay, these are some of the household names that we talk about. So going forward, I think uh, these are some of the things that we need to look back and say, we, you know, we have a history and the history is so rich when it comes to football. And for me, when, when we talk about this record that we're just trying to champion, we are not saying things from without. And what we are saying is that the records are there for everyone to see. If you want witnesses, if you want players that have played with this player, it's not just at a domestic level, but even at international level, there's a record that is there and you can't dispute it. So really, in as okay. much as we have to... Okay, let's accommodate John Zimba on the line. Uh, welcome to uh, the program. Hello, good afternoon, uh, my colleagues. Uh, good afternoon. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. All right, what's your contribution? Uh, yes, my contribution, uh, uh, first of all, thank you very much. Um, I've been following your conversation, which is very appetizing. My name is uh, John Zimba, former referee. I'm, based, I'm calling you from Dollar. Um, what I want to contribute is that uh, I've seen Godfrey Chitaro. I watched the game by then I was in Kabwe. The game that I normally remember very well, it was Lusaka Tigers versus Cabo, uh, Cabo Warriors versus Lusaka Tigers at railway ground. And uh, the way you are describing Godfrey Chitalo, I tell you, I was, my heart is broken because he, I'm remembering the tragedy and uh, remembering seeing him the way he was doing the breakthrough. How I wish Bill O'Pili had not died because he, I remember at one time I was talking to Bill O'Pili. I'm sure you know him. He was with, with Lusaka Tigers and he joined Cabo Warriors. I tell you it was a good game. In that game, he scored six goals. I was there in 1980. So the discussion that you are talking definitely is putting us at a record because, yes, as the other gentleman was putting it, where, where are we? It, this is a, a lesson that we have learned. And uh, it is my prayer that uh, things should just be put in order so that uh, God for Yucatan is recognized. Okay. We had t -shirts, we had shirts, these khaki shirts that we were putting on by then. I was at the Nkwashi Primary School in Boisha. We were putting our names, Godfrey Castaro, at the back <laughs> of our uniform. So as you are talking about Godfrey Castaro, you are reminding me of those years, 1979. So okay, thank, thank you very much for coming through. Thank you so much, and please, God bless you. I'm praying for all those soccer fans that please, Let's pray hard that these things are done. This is John Zimba calling you from Dollar. Thank you. Okay, yes. thank you very much, John Zimba from Dollar. Now, very quickly, Sydney, in other matters, football will be back um, next month. Um, ex ex exactly dates. Have you set the dates exactly when <laughs> uh, the league will start? Well, maybe before I answer that, I think you have to commend the efforts of uh, what Jerry did for, for this country. I think yes. even mm. away from everyone who talks about football, it's important that... Uh, we document some of the things that we talk about. Uh, so for the people that talk about football, those that write, I think one of the ways we'll cure having these debates going forward is having people uh, write about these things and document them so that they are available for everyone and anyone to read. Yeah. So uh, coming to the return of the league, I think uh, the head of state uh, has uh, set the tempo in terms of what is supposed to happen. Uh, he did indicate that uh, July, and uh, July obviously some people are thinking it's going to be July 1 or July 2. Yes. But uh, there has been a task force that has been working in the background uh, yes. between the Minister of uh, Sports uh, and the Minister of Health. Also, FAS has been tagging along to try and uh, now actualize what, uh, what is supposed to happen. So 
uh, the projection is that uh, from now up to the time the game resumed, we we'll have uh, the inspection of stadia, uh, the identified stadia that will host some of these games. And uh, that exercise will be conducted in collaboration with uh, the Minister of Sports and the Minister of Health. Then once the stadia are certified, I think the other issue is uh, uh, checking on the campsites and uh, places where these players are, uh, are going to be lodged. Yes, so uh, that is also going to be part of the preparatory phase. Uh, it is expected that once that is done, then the clubs will be uh, told when to start training. They can't start mm. training now. Yeah. They will be told when to start yes. training, and it won't be full, like at a, at a go, you start training as a, as a group. Illegal. I think there are phases that the Minister of Health has uh, guided. So we are still a bit, uh, uh, not too close to uh, kicking off, but I think the first steps now will start with uh, inspection of stadia. So that is where we are at. But uh, it is expected that uh, at least... Uh, by mid-July or a bit further, we should be able to be back uh, playing these games. Okay, gentlemen, yeah. we have to go. Time Maybe is just a quick on comment our on side. this. Um, <laughs> tonight, but, but, on for the we go but for his own information, we have the yeah. yeah. legal stats. Yeah, for the yeah. presidential yeah. and for me, I woke up and I did yes, warn we people. Told you, we no, told no, no, no. I, I, I did warn people yes. that. Uh, it's not automatic when the president announces. Look at it. He yes, says in July. The now in July, will be met. the president right. has put a caveat. Yes, He's saying the minimum conditions the, will be it, met. It's a cold season. Okay, so the minimum and conditions tonight, will be met. I don't know how you're going to disrupt me. Yeah. Manchester City versus Chelsea. Um, I don't know. He's a Chelsea fan. He can come on it. Loses, then they will hand over the title to Liverpool for the first time in 30 years. This yeah, is the program for today. Liverpool win, even if Man City win. <laughs> Liverpool are the this is the program for today. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Modern Sinkala. Goodbye and see you next week. <laughs>